Beneath the tranquil beauty of La Palma, one of the most picturesque islands in the Canary Archipelago, lies a geological secret that could unleash one of the most devastating natural disasters in human history. Imagine towering waves, hundreds of meters high, tearing across the Atlantic, obliterating coastlines from Africa to the Americas, leaving cities like New York, Miami, and Lisbon submerged in chaos. This is a real scientific hypothesis, rooted in the volatile nature of La Palma's volcano. Scientists warned that the western flank of the volcano, weakened by centuries of volcanic activity and erosion, could collapse during a future eruption. Such a collapse could send billions of tons of rock crashing into the Atlantic, triggering a catastrophic mega-tsunami with waves capable of reshaping entire continents. But how real is this threat? Could a single volcanic island truly hold the power to change the world? Let's find out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. La Palma is one of the youngest islands in the Canary Archipelago, formed approximately 2 million years ago due to hotspot volcanic activity. The island's geology is dominated by the Cumbre Vieja volcano, a prominent volcanic ridge running north to south. This ridge is a hotbed of seismic and volcanic activity, making La Palma one of the most geologically dynamic regions in the world. Cumbre Vieja has erupted multiple times in recorded history, with its most recent eruptions occurring in 1949, 1971, and 2021. Each of these eruptions was accompanied by significant seismic activity, highlighting the instability of the volcanic edifice. The 2021 eruption in particular caused widespread destruction, displacing thousands of residents and reshaping the island's landscape. What makes La Palma particularly intriguing and potentially dangerous is the island's structural instability. The western flank of the Cumbre Vieja Ridge is considered geologically unstable due to several contributing factors. The island's steep slopes are a result of rapid volcanic buildup. These slopes are prone to gravitational stress, making them vulnerable to collapse. Over time, volcanic rocks on the island have been weakened by chemical interactions with water. Rainfall, groundwater, and seawater intrusion erode the structural integrity of the rocks, increasing the likelihood of failure. Earthquakes often associated with volcanic activity exacerbate the instability of the western flank. These seismic events create cracks and fractures that weaken the already precarious structure. Evidence from marine sediment cores around the Canary Islands suggests that large-scale landslides have occurred in the past. For instance, the collapse of the neighboring island of Tenerife's flank produced massive debris fields underwater. This historical precedent raises concerns that La Palma could experience a similar event. The current geological configuration of La Palma suggests that the western flank of the Cumbre Vieja is moving slowly over time. The 1949 eruption provided a stark indication of this potential hazard. During the eruption, a two kilometers long crack formed along the western flank. Geologists observed that parts of the ridge had shifted downward and outward, suggesting the possibility of a future catastrophic landslide. The idea of a mega tsunami originating from La Palma was popularized by a 2001 study conducted by geologists Stephen N. Ward and Simon Day. According to their research, a future eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano could trigger a massive landslide if the western flank of the volcano collapses into the Atlantic Ocean. Such an event would displace a colossal volume of water, generating a tsunami of unprecedented scale. Ward and Day's model estimated that the collapse could involve up to 500 cubic kilometers of material sliding into the ocean at high speed. The resulting waves could initially reach heights of several hundred meters near La Palma before radiating outward across the Atlantic. These waves would diminish in height as they traveled, but they could still reach significant amplitudes upon impacting distant coastlines. The Canary Islands and nearby African coastline could experience waves up to 100 meters high within minutes. Waves of 10 to 25 meters could reach the western coast of Europe and West Africa within a few hours. 
the eastern coast of North America could be hit by waves ranging from 5 to 20 meters high within 8 to 10 hours. The economic, social, and ecological devastation from such an event would be catastrophic, with millions of lives and trillions of dollars worth of infrastructure at risk. For the Canary Islands, the eruption itself would be catastrophic. La Palma, known for its lush forests, agricultural landscapes, and picturesque towns, would face widespread destruction. Lava flows would incinerate homes, infrastructure, and farmlands, as seen in the 2021 eruption when entire communities were displaced, and banana plantations, a key economic driver, were destroyed. Toxic gases such as sulfur dioxide would further jeopardize the health of residents, while asphalt could disrupt air travel and contaminate water supplies. Compounding the crisis, the local economy, heavily reliant on tourism and agriculture, would collapse in the immediate aftermath of such an event. The most alarming implication of a major eruption and subsequent flank collapse is the potential generation of a mega tsunami. Within minutes of the collapse, waves as high as 100 meters could strike nearby islands and the coast of Northwest Africa, decimating low-lying areas and coastal populations. Fishing villages, industrial ports, and tourist resorts would be swept away, resulting in significant loss of life and infrastructure damage. Hours after the event, tsunamis could reach the western coasts of Europe, including Spain, Portugal, France, and the United Kingdom. While the waves might lose some energy as they spread across the Atlantic, they could still reach heights of 10 to 25 meters, posing a severe threat to coastal cities like Lisbon, Cadiz, and Bordeaux. Flooding, destruction of historical landmarks, and disruption of critical infrastructure would cause widespread chaos and displacement. The eastern coast of North and South America would face devastating waves approximately 8 to 10 hours after the collapse. Cities such as Miami, New York, and Boston in the United States, as well as coastal regions in Brazil, Venezuela, and the Caribbean, could experience waves up to 20 meters high. These waves would destroy harbors, airports, and densely populated urban areas, resulting in significant loss of life and crippling economic damage. Ports along the eastern seaboard of the United States, Europe, and West Africa facilitate the movement of goods, resources, and energy supplies. Their destruction would disrupt supply chains, inflate the cost of goods, and create economic uncertainty on a global scale. Insurance companies would face unprecedented claims, while governments would need to divert vast resources to recovery efforts, further straining global markets. While the mega-tsunami hypothesis has garnered widespread attention, it remains a subject of considerable scientific debate. Critics argue that the 2001 model may overestimate the likelihood and scale of such an event for several reasons. Recent studies suggest that the volume of material likely to collapse may be smaller than Ward and Day's original estimate, reducing the magnitude of the tsunami. The manner in which the collapse occurs, whether as a single catastrophic event or as a series of smaller landslides, would significantly impact the size of the resulting tsunami. Some scientists believe a gradual collapse is more probable. The attenuation of wave energy as it travels across the Atlantic Ocean may reduce the impact on distant coastlines more than the original model suggests. Although past collapses have been documented, there is limited evidence to suggest that they produced mega-tsunamis of the scale hypothesized by Ward and Day. Despite these criticisms, the potential consequences of a mega-tsunami are so severe that the hypothesis cannot be dismissed outright. Ongoing research and monitoring are essential to better understand the risks. Given the catastrophic potential of a La Palma-induced mega-tsunami, robust monitoring and early warning systems are crucial. Scientists and government agencies have implemented several measures to track the island's geological activity. Networks of seismometers detect earthquakes and magma movements beneath the surface, providing early indications of volcanic activity. GPS stations and satellite-based radar equipment track changes in the island's topography, 
which may signal an impending eruption or landslide. Sensors measure groundwater levels and temperature changes, which can indicate increased volcanic or hydrothermal activity. International collaborations, such as those under the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, aim to enhance global tsunami detection and communication networks. These systems, while invaluable, face challenges, including funding limitations and the unpredictability of volcanic and seismic events. Strengthening these systems is vital to minimize risks. The possibility of a mega tsunami originating from La Palma's Cumbrevieja volcano represents a low probability but high impact event. While the scientific community continues to debate the likelihood and scale of such an occurrence, the potential consequences are too grave to ignore. Ongoing research, improved monitoring systems, and proactive disaster preparedness are essential to mitigate the risks. The story of La Palma serves as a reminder of the dynamic and unpredictable nature of our planet. As we seek to understand and adapt to these geological forces, collaboration between scientists, governments, and communities will be key to ensuring the safety and resilience of vulnerable regions. Leave your thoughts on this impending disaster in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.